Hello students. Today in this video we will learn about endocrine system. In endocrine system we will learn about endocrine glands, their location, and their function. So let's begin. Here in the figure, we can see different kinds of endocrine glands. Pineal gland, hypothalamus, pituitary gland. These glands are located in head region. Whereas parathyroid, thyroid and thymus are located in neck region. Adrenal gland is located above the kidney. Pancreas, they are in the abdomen region. They are located parallel to the stomach. Then comes the kidneys. Kid, oh sorry, not kidney is not any gland. Testis and ovary. Testis and ovary together they are known as gonads. Testis are located in the scrotum outside the body and ovaries are located in lower abdomen let us see again testes are present in scrotum Pineal, hypothalamus and pituitary, they are located in head region, parathyroid, thyroid and thymus in neck region, adrenal, pancreas, adrenal in above the kidney, pancreas parallel to stomach, testis and ovary together they are known as gonads and both of them are, uh, testis are located outside the body in the scrotum and ovaries are located in the lower abdomen region. Now we will learn about their function and the secretion of these glands. Let's move ahead. Endocrine glands in human beings, they release, they help in the actual control and coordination. These glands helps in the control and coordination by producing a chemical substance and the name of that substance is hormone that helps in coordination, right? There are different types of endocrine glands, pineal, hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, adrenal, pancreas, testis and ovary. Let's now see what a how these glands helps us and what is their role or secretion. Pituitary are the pea-sized glands that are located in the skull that is in brain. The pituitary is known as master controlling gland, release a number of hormones that activate other glands. So it is activating other glands, right? So that's why pituitary is known as master controlling gland. Second one is hypothalamus gland that is present in the brain. Hypothalamus produces releasing hormone and inhibitory hormones. Hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland. What is releasing hormone and what is inhibitory hormone? Releasing hormone when this releasing hormone reaches to pituitary, it will command the other glands to start functioning, right? But when inhibitory hormone is released by hypothalamus, 
pituitary will send the command to other glands for stop right so releasing hormone which is also no we call it as rh and this is ih inhibitory hormone and releasing hormone so they are like start and stop what is the need of this releasing hormone and this inhibitory hormone that we will learn at the last of this video in feedback mechanism right next one is pineal gland which is present in the brain has no such function that's why this is also known as vestigial organ vestigial organ are the are those organs which no longer function so you can write the example of vestigial organ is pineal gland another one that in life process we have discussed about the appendix appendix is also the vestigial organ which doesn't have any function or those such functions are not being discovered yet next are thyroid gland parathyroid thymus and pancreas thyroid gl gland it is located in the neck that releases thyroxine hormone students you have to remember about the name of hormone and the location what is the role of thyroxine thyroxine increases the body metabolism so thyroxine is helping in metabolism what is metabolism the overall activities that is taking place in our body is metabolism in which food is broken down and converted into heat and energy now there is a disease that is uh, if the thyroxine hormone is not released then there is one disease that person will suffer and that disease name is goiter right if a person is not consuming iodine properly right if person doesn't consume not consuming iodine properly or in sufficient amount what will happen thyroid gland will swell right and that leads to goiter that is swelling of the neck region thyroid region and that particular condition is known as goiter right so disease also we have to remember second one is parathyroid gland these are four small glands located in the neck behind the thyroid gland so for example if let me draw let me try if this is a thyroid gland then there are small tiny four button like glands those gl at the back side okay back side behind of the thyroid gland and such glands are known as such glands are such glands are known as thyroid gland these glands secretes a hormone that regulates body's use of calcium and phosphorus body's use of calcium and phosphorus to maintain healthy bones parathyroid hormones also affect muscle contraction and the conduction of nerve impulses because here it is this one is uh, dealing with calcium and phosphorus these are ions so this one is needed for bones third one is the thymus gland which is also present in the lower part of the neck and the upper part of the chest thymus gland secrete thymus hormone which play a role in development of immune system of the body so these three about three are located in the neck region thyroid releases thyroxine right it releases thyroxine hormone parathyroid releases hormone that is needed for calcium and phosphorus metabolism in bones and third one that is thymus is playing important role in the immune system of body next one is a pancreas which is long which is long narrow gland located in the abdomen behind the stomach and beneath the liver pancreas secretes insulin a hormone that regulates the body's use of sugar now if 
a person doesn't secrete or a person's pancreas doesn't release insulin in a proper amount then the glucose amount will increase in the body and that leads to another type of disease which is known as diabetes let me write it in a clear way diabetes in this condition person doesn't produce insulin so what will happen the glucose concentration inside the blood will go on increasing that is very lethal if the amount of glucose is more in the body it will lead to diseases like related to the heart right and metabolism also so here we have learned about the thyroid gland parathyroid thymus and pancreas apart from insulin pancreas also releases one more hormone that is known as glucagon now here insulin reduces glucose here glucagon will increase right but the function of both of them is to balance is to balance glucose concentration in blood either by reducing or by either by increasing or reducing right if the amount of glucose is much more higher in the body then insulin will produce if the amount of glucose drops down in the body then pancreas will release glucagon and the disease related to it is diabetes adrenal gland there are two small glands each located at the top of our one kidney the adrenal gland releases the hormone adrenaline which speeds up the heart rate increases the blood pressure to help the body to cope up with the emergency situations also releases hormones that control the level of salt and water in the blood and help to regulate the use of sugar it also secretes small amount of male sex hormones androgens in both males and females so the important one that we have to consider about the adre adrenaline is secretion of adrenal right it helps our body to to cope up in the emergency situation emergency situation that's why this hormone this gland is known as fight or light hormone right so hormone and gland adrenaline is a fight or flight hormone that help us in the to cope up in with the emergency situation next one is the gonads those are testes and ovaries testes that secretes secrete testosterone a male sex hormone in addition to contributing to male sex characteristics androgens contribute the production of sperm and the development of prostate gland what are androgen androgens are the male sex hormone here it is written na? male sex hormone are the androgen so androgen are male sex hormone right okay next one is female female have sex glands called ovaries that releases hormones called estrogens and progesterone right so the hormones that release the estrogen and progesterone these hormones contribute to the development of female sexual characteristics including skin hair breast development estrogen works with certain pituitary hormone to control the menstrual cycle right so this was this was about the endocrine glands we have one more slide is there picture of different glands the location and the hormone that is being released by 
these glands. Let us see here one more diagram. I mean, important topic is given. It's about the pituitary. Pituitary releases the growth hormone that regulates the growth, right? And if there is excess amount of growth hormone, then there is a disease that is known as gigantism, right? And if the secretion is low of growth hormones, more than gigantism, low, then it will lead to another type of disease, dwarfism, right? So we have learned different types of diseases. Let us discuss one by one all the disease. Pituitary, there are two diseases, gigantism and tropism. Thyroid, there is a disease, name is goiter. If iodine consumption is less, right, then there is a disease related to pancreas, related to insulin, right, and that disease is diabetes right so we have learned till now four diseases gigantism tropism quieter and diabetes it is because of the pituitary gland thyroid gland and pancreas apart from insulin pancreas also releases glucagon what is the function of it to balance to control the glucose level in the blood clear now we have to discuss about one more topic that is feedback mechanism what is a feedback mechanism a feedback mechanism in previous of in the previously in this video uh, we ha i have told you that there is a feedback mechanism in which rh and LH is needed, right? Let's take an example how this RH and LH is needed. Let's see if a person, let's say if a person consumes glucose, more amount of glucose, let's say. A person has consumed more amount of glucose. That means the glucose concentration has increased. Pancreas won't start itself. What will happen? Hypothalamus will release the releasing hormone. It will go to the pituitary gland. Okay. Pituitary gland then commands the pancreas to release insulin. Clear? Let me discuss it again. Person has consumed glucose. Right? Like glucose sweets. That's sweets, chocolates, many chocolates and sweets in a day. So to reduce the glucose level in the blood, person has to, I mean, person body has to start producing insulin. RH, that is released by hypothalamus. This is releasing hormone, right? It will go to the pituitary. Clear? Let me rub the speed back. It is going to the pituitary. Pituitary will now command to pancreas to start releasing insulin. So insulin is produced. Now what happened? Now let's see. In the initially, inside the body, the amount of glucose was, was more than, oh, let's say, more than 200. Right? The glucose needed is up to 120. It was 200. So this mechanism has started. And this mechanism is start mechanism. All right. Now from 200, the help of insulin, the 200 has now reduced to 100. So this mechanism of converting glucose has to stop, right? So what will happen now? Now, LH will be released by hypothalamus. This LH will go to pituitary. All right. This LH will go to pituitary. This pituitary 
will now command pancreas to stop producing insulin right so what will happen stop producing insulin right and then this mechanism is stopped so there is no further breakdown of glucose and the amount will remain as it is in the body so this mechanism is stop mechanism start and stop mechanism and this entire process is known as feedback mechanism all right this entire process is known as feedback mechanism in which a single gland is collecting the information when to start and when to stop so this was it about the feedback mechanism one more figure in which hypothalamus thyroid pancreas ovaries parathyroid thymus adrenal the secretion and their role is written thank you we have finished our chapter entire about endocrine system control and coordination in plants control and coordination in humans one point that i wanted to end up with here is about the nervous system mechanism of nervous system if we compare the nervous system and endocrine system then nervous system is quick the message that send that reaches is quick okay whereas endocrine is slow message which is slow but nervous system ends quickly whereas endocrine system last for longer duration of time right so effect in of endocrine system is more right effect of endocrine system is more whereas nervous system message reaches to quick right so both of them has its own advantage so we will wind up here thank you thank you so we have discussed all about the endocrine system and the nervous system in plants as well as in animals thank you